The next speaker is uh, someone I know well and work with on a daily basis. Yeah, that's me. So one of the hardest things for me is to introduce myself. So the only thing I will say is that for the next 25 minutes, I will use my head of, a, of the OSCAL Strategic Out Outreach Director, and I will do my best to introduce you to Open Security Controls Assessment Language, or OSCAL, to convince you of its power when it comes to security automation, continuous authorization to operate, compliance as code, and of course, ZTA. If you can move to the slide, thank you. So shifting left, we all wanna do that. Implementing ZTA, yes. But let's see how can we do that with OSCAL. My apologies, the headset just fell. So a key component of the cloud uh, development lifecycle is the early development phase involving infrastructure as code, which is used to define and provision the initial cloud resources and configurations in code files. So if infrastructure as code contains a misconfiguration or compliance violations, it becomes a means of deploying those vulnerabilities at scale, representing significant cloud and on-premises risk. About five years ago, while working on uh, research in cloud security solutions, the idea of control assessment language surfaced as the means for implementing interoperable security assessment automation solutions, which we name Open Security Controls Assessment Language. OSCAL supports zero trust architectures, and allows to shift left the continuous security assessment. I will try to demonstrate these two statements at high level due to the uh, restrictions of time while introducing you also to OSCAL. For a deeper dive, please join us on March 1st and 2nd when we have the third Open Security Controls Assessment Language Workshop. So, um, why are we here today? It's because we're all faced with the same challenges. The information te technology is complex. What are you looking for? What are you trying to do? Automation. Security vulnerabilities are everywhere. What do we need to do? Constant monitoring. Regulatory frameworks are burdensome. So we need to automate it, GRC tools. Documentation becomes outdated very fast. So we need a constant update to keep everything um, accurate. And the risk management is absolutely very hard. So all experts need help. And this is what we are looking for in terms of disrupting technologies. Next, please. So what we need, something like OSCAL. When we started the project, we knew that the stakeholders of cloud-based solutions are segmented into constituencies with various needs. Therefore, we research a solution that ensured all the stakeholders are able to exchange information in an interoperable fashion by metaphorically speaking, communicating using the same language. We understood all skull has to be like a Rosetta Stone that enables tools and organizations to exchange information by automation. We wanted the system security assessment process to be rapid, continue, and operate at the speed of the technology. Next, please. So, NISTED and FedRAM embarked on a collaboration about four years ago to provide a common single machine readable language expressing XML, JSON, and YAML for multiple compliance and risk management frameworks like SP-853, ISO IEC-27001 and 2, and COBIT-5. The sky's the limit here. We want a language that software and service providers, I apologize, can use to express implementation guidance against security controls and which can be also used to uh, share how security controls are implemented in the system security plans. We want to be able to express security assessment plans and assessment 
um, results. So we design a language that enables automated traceability from a selection of the security controls through the implementation of the controls and the assessment of the system security posture. We can think of OSCAL as a collection of related models. So the diagram on the slide depicts OSCAL models and the way they are linked to deliver the desired, the desired traceability. Next, please. So let's zoom, let's zoom just for a moment into OSCAL models. The diagram is equivalent a thousand words. It uh, tells you the complexity, but in the same time, the flexibility that the models are going to provide. So in OSCAL, starting from the left, from the towards the right, we have um, control catalogs. Then an organization uh, that organize collections of controls like uh, NIST SP 853. So additionally, catalogs may also define objectives and methods for assessing the control. Something like got just released is the NIST SP 853A, the assessment procedures. The OSCAL catalog model combines assessment objectives and methods with security controls because some control catalog formats such as COVID-5 address assessment information directly, others in, in separate documents. But uh, combining the information we found that is extremely valuable. Therefore, OSCAL supports the structures. So the OSCAL profile layer, which is, uh, I'm sorry, the OSCAL profile model, which is the second model from the left, Define specific set of selected security controls requirements from one or more control catalogs. This is extremely important because many of us have to demonstrate that our infrastructures are uh, compliant or secure against multiple regulatory frameworks. So the implementation layer has two models. In here is where the innovation with OSCAL starts. So there is the System security plan model that everybody is familiar with um, is equivalent to or uh, is designed to support documenting how a system is uh, uh, security controls are implemented, but also a component definition model that allows the definition of a set of components that each provide a description of the control supported by either a specific implementation of a hardware, software, or service or by a given policy, process, procedure, or compliance artifacts. Remember, please, that uh, Ron described the assurance case. So think back of the assurance case that he had in, uh, in 80160, and we think that a component definition can support uh, demonstrating uh, the, the assurance case in analyzing it. The component definition model can be used either by vendors to describe how the components are um, implemented uh, controls and how the components can be configured to meet requirements for different um, uh, categorizations, low, moderate, or high, or can be used by organizations that can use this model to identify uh, playbooks for their internal purpose. The system security plan allows the security implementation of the information system to be documented by starting with the selecting of what's called profiles or baselines and in documenting all this information. The OSCAL assessment layer, which is the next uh, one in uh, yellow, um, is um, comprised of three models. So we have the assessment plan model, the assessment result model, and the plan of actions and milestones. The assessment plan model represents the planning of the period of, or a continuous assessment, while um, the assessment result model represents the information produced from a set of assessment activities and allows for the same level of details as the assessment plan. The plan of actions and milestones represents a set of findings for a periodic or continuous assessment that needs to be addressed by the system owner. Next, please. 
please don't feel overwhelmed by all this information. It is really at the high level and we do have everything in on our uh, on our website, very well explained, very well designed. But to try to drive the conversation to the points I want to make, I need to also highlight that the OSCAL models that I just presented are used to generate OSCAL content. To generate the OSCAL content, we are not uh, envisioning that humans have to read this machine readable formats, absolutely not. So you're going to use OSCAL editorial tools to generate your OSCAL content aligned with the type of the information that you need to use and represent. And this OSCAL content in action gets them back inject, um, um, ingested by the OSCAL GRC tools in our, it, it is used to support the security assessment automation. Next, please. Next, please. Yes, this one. So this slide only wants to depict graphically uh, different types of OSCAL content that are mapped to the risk management uh, uh, framework steps that would benefit from automation with OSCAL. I'm not going to stay longer here. It's just the representation graphically because we want to move forward and see how those um, how the models can be used in the OSCAL content, different types of OSCAL content used for shifting left and for ZTA. Next, please. But before we get there, there's one extra very important information because we discussed at length uh, authorizations, uh, ATO, continuous ATO, and uh, concepts in the cloud environment where controls get inherited. So next, please. We do know that the cloud computing is the core accelerator of digital business transformation, but with cloud computing, data is definitely outside of uh, our direct control. So moreover, the complexity of the cloud systems and the constant technological evolution are making the risk assessment and the authorization process of the entire stack difficult to uh, authorizing officials. So OSCAL allows for better traceability and transparency into the cloud infrastructure by facilitating a proper risk assessment. Next, please. So OSCAL provides support for leveraging existing authorization to operate for complex logically stacked systems. The information provided through this mechanism is also instrumental in issuing authorization to use so, and uh, common controls authorization. So a common control authorization, just a very brief recap, is issued for a common control implemented, assessed and made available for inheritance by the organizational systems. While an authorization to use, it's used when a customer organization chooses to accept the authorization to operate, like the provisional ATO that FedRAM is issuing by the provider or by FedRAM in the example that I uh, gave, upon reviewing the authorization package. This is extremely important. The customer authorization to use as a statement or a customer acceptance of risk for the system service or application being used with respect to the customer's information. So we are faced often with such situations when deploying and authorizing to operate a, a SaaS system running on a separately authorized infrastructure as a system environment. The SaaS system, while inherits controls from the infrastructure service um, that, um, that has a previously uh, issued authorization to operate will have to have to be able to use that to issue an authorization to use. Many practitioners are often referring to the infrastructure as a service ATO as the leverage authorization used for issuing this authorization to use. So similarly, the SaaS system is often uh, referred to as the leveraging system and um, the um, while it's uh, undergoing the authorization to operate will inherit controls from 
uh, this the leveraged uh, system that's been previously authorized. Confusing, hey? I, I bet it's it, it is. And I'm not 100% sure I do uh, just it in such a short time, but those are very important concepts. But, but OSCAL is designed to support those uh, risk determinations by allowing proper identifications for the inherited security and privacy controls implementations in the authorization package of the leverage system and the customer responsibility uh, responses to response to uh, responsibilities. Next, please. The next slide is only going to uh, depict graphically the supporting assemblies, um, uh, and they are going to, when uh, we go to that slide, there is a bit of latency, and I apologize. Next. We skip one slide, but I do not see that, but that's okay. It was just a graphical representation of how uh, uh, OSCAL is supporting this inheritance. So we can go now to shifting left with OSCAL. And let's go next. So using the content based on the models that I described before, the OSCAL models that I described before, content, OSCAL content can be generated. So NIST. You can use um, NIST provided a catalog, 853 catalog and machine readable format in OSCAL in the profiles. You can have profiles uh, in machine readable format that FedRAM provided for 853, REV4 and REV5. This information can be used to define by vendors or by entities that uh, uh, for internal purpose for organization to define playbooks, can define component definitions. So, and those components definitions can be used to build the systems. So please, when I'm describing this, have in, in mind all the DevSecOps process. You build your system from components. You can document how each component is satisfying the controls, how the component is configured and hardened. And then you can go and slice that system and assess it with any way you want it. So you can have multiple assessment plans depending how you want to assess the system. And this is what is the determined by um, internal policies for each organization. You can um, use the assessment results and the plan of actions and milestones to close the, the cycle and be able to continuously uh, improve the security portion of your system and continuously uh, authorized to operate. If we go to the next slide, maybe that will make a little bit more justice to, and we can um, dive deeper. So there is some automatic um, part in here, some animation that I'm not sure is going to align very well with what I'm going to say, but I apologize if that's not the case. The lower part of the diagram is exactly what I presented before. And in addition to the model, something that in the content that can be today created, uh, we are also working on expanding that, adding um, important assemblies for representing hardening, for representing rules. So think that in addition to 853 controls, you want to be able to document in there how your components and how your systems uh, or link the information from six, for example, or from uh, CIS benchmarks or your internal rules. So you can do all this and that information can be uh, used to identify how we're going to check on those rules. But what is the most important part here is, and I'm hoping that the automation will, uh, will start. Uh, can you click once? Gosh, all of them came at once. That's okay. So those are different entities there, and they are responsible. Uh, they have different responsibilities. So you do have their the vendors that are responsible for documenting the how the components or the capabilities can be secured, but they are not responsible for your system. They are not assuming the risk on your behalf. So you, as a system owner, have to be the one that is making the final decision, and then to maintain that independence, and especially for 
moderate and, and high systems, the assessors have to be independent. So those are different entities that have to look at what you have there, what you document and how your system is, and design how to assess the system, how to test it, or what methods are going to be used, what assessment procedures are going to be used for that purpose, and complete the assessment uh, in, in the manner in which uh, satisfies the, um, the policies for each organization. If you click one more time, that will also show, hopefully, how that it gets projected the information can be used to shift left. So, you can use information how the controls are satisfied or how the system is hardened that can be provided in either um, XML, JSON, or YAML. I saw that uh, Kelsey uh, was using uh, earlier, I think some structures, uh, no, uh, I apologize. Uh, some uh, configurations were in Istio and uh, Istio in YAML um, yesterday, Zach was the one uh, that was using those. So, your CI/CD pipeline can use the rules that you have in place and the information about the controls to do some of the pre-runtime checks for all the components that are part of your systems. Once those pre-run uh, checks are done successfully and you have all the fixes in there, you deploy it. You can deploy it on your staging environment. While you have already everything running out there on the blue environment, you want to do all those updates. You go and do your runtime checks. Once you are satisfied with that, you can just flip and you change the from the load balancer you, or you change the IPs and the blue become green and green become blue and you can continue your process. So you continuously can uh, deploy it and you continuously using uh, an automation um, based on OSCAL information, OSCAL content, you can deliver a continuous um, assessment to for your system and security assessment that continuous authorization to operate. Going next. So implementing zero trust architectures, we are all moving in that direction and I promise that I'm going to demonstrate that we can use OSCAL for that. That is going to be very brief due to the uh, time constraints that we have here. Next, please. Just yesterday, the OMB released a memorandum 2209 of, uh, and uh, title moving uh, USG towards zero trust cybersecurity principle. So, you probably recall from the previous diagram that I was saying there that this is not a leveraged system. I didn't go into details over that, but OSCAL supports scenarios in which your identity is external to your system. So you can document that, you can authorize that system, and you can think anything you want, that service mesh if you want for that, for that matter. So among many things, uh, the Memorandum puts a great emphasis on centralized, even federated identity management and access control. So uh, single sign-on services are listed there at application level. Do you mind to click for me, please? So think a little bit, and I think that this was also discussed before in some of uh, break rooms also, and questions were asked. You want a high assurance level for your single sign-on service because it's so important. But in the same time, more than anything, what matters to me at least the most, you have to demonstrate that those services that are so critical for building your zero trust architecture or zero trust system, those services have to be also very, very secure. So demonstrating that they maintain their security posture to help you secure your system is very important. So you should use OSCAL to accomplish it in a continuous manner. With that, I rest my case. So quad era demonstrandum. Next, please. The next slides are just informative. We have, I'm waiting to shift. Yes, this is our website. 
And it's very simple to remember as just www.nis.gov, everybody knows us, slash OSCOV. You'll find a lot of information there and you'll find reference material. We'll find a list of tools uh, from entities that came forward towards, uh, to us to list their uh, tools in there. But more than anything, what I like the most are the, the reference material, the outlines and the descriptions. Every, every single assembly um, that we have in those models and how those can be used. Next, please. Next is the page with tools and we keep enhancing this as entities are coming forward. When we shift to the next page. Next slide. We skipped two, but that's okay. It's not a problem. Um, there was a page that just had a, a list of our um, tools that are on one of our pages on the website. Those are publicly available resources from us, from FedRAM, from the community. OSCAL is, and I'm very proud to say though, today actually started last year because the first international entity that came forward to say we're adopting OSCAL was from Germany, Bosch, that established a certification, cloud certification uh, authority there with the OSCAL based on OSCAL. OSCAL is internationally adopted. It's not just in US. It's, it's international and we are very proud of it. And we think that is really, really helping. So we have a large community and if you go next, there's some information of how you can join our community and be familiar with few of our OSCAL adopters. This is not a comprehensive list. This is just a minor list of entities that wanted to be acknowledged here. In the next slide, I would like to thank you and I'm ready for questions if there are any or if time permits.